Hey everybody, it's that time of season again. So we have a Honda Versamo 4-in-1 system. Honda HRX 217 with cruise control. So this is my brother-in-law's lawnmower and he said he couldn't get it started and he brought it down and we pulled it over like five times yep. and it started, but you could smell the bad gas. So we already drained the tank and put fresh gas in it and it runs so much better. Nice fresh gas. Uh, it runs so much better, but the carburetor still is dirty because it doesn't want to idle down. If you try to idle it down, it just stalls out and then it's kind of hunting around. So G Jr. already pulled the flute bowl off of it and tried to do a mini clean on it. You can see it's got a brand new air filter in it. Um, so we brought it home from work and we're gonna go ahead and get this rest of the air filter housing off here so we can get down to the carburetor, get the carburetor off so we can start cleaning it. We also pulled the blade off. The blade was pretty sharp, but we went ahead and, and I took and hit it with a, uh, a uh, sanding disc so the blade's nice and sharp. Did you change the oil? I already changed the oil. You already changed the oil in it, so we just gotta get the carburetor cleaned up so it'll work. What's good about these is this actually has a fuel shut off and you already have that cut off, correct? Yes. That is already cut off, so we don't have to worry about spilling any fuel. So let's get a 10 millimeter and let's get this air cleaner housing off and we'll go from there. All right, G Junior already took the one bolt out. It has these two bolts loose and coming apart. So when you pull these two long bolts out, these bolts actually, do they actually hold the carburetor to the block? Yes. All right, so those two actually hold the carburetor to the block. So go ahead and take your air filter housing out. What else you got? So you got a little got vent a hose. Vent, vent hose. So we're going okay. to that So there. as you see, when you take those two long bolts out, the carburetor is already floppy loose. Okay? So um, let's see what we're going to do next on this. So there's the fuel line and it actually came right off. So we need to figure out how to get the linkages off of here. There's a spring here. That's obviously for the governor. Uh, we're probably going to have to take this bolt out next to get this plate off so we can get in there and get the fuel line disconnected because it's kind of underneath there. Go ahead and get that bolt out there. Uh, it is a 10 millimeter headed bolt. Just go ahead. Just go ahead. Yeah, but it's gonna it's gonna bend it. All right, try it now. I'll hold it up. There you go. All right. So. That comes out like that. That actually makes it easier. So now that comes out. Now see how this li So it's always good to get your phone out and take a picture of the linkage so you know which way it goes. So we know that this one here goes here. Here, once you hold the camera. And we'll pull this out. And I'll do ahead and disconnect the linkage there. And I'll pull this one out. And I'm going to put this one back in here so it stays. And we're also going to clean all this stuff out off so it doesn't go back in the carburetor. So there's the first piece of linkage. So now... The next piece of linkage is right here, and we're just going to, oh, we're gonna have to disconnect the fuel line. There's no clamp on it. I wonder if it's gonna come right off. No, it shouldn't come right out. Let me get a screwdriver. Right. Usually they have uh, clamps on them, but they're so weak. A lot of people don't put them back on yeah well there is no clamp on this one i'm trying to get the screwdriver underneath the rubber to get it to slide out it's not cooperating let me get up Have my brand new pick tools let's see if i can get the pick tool underneath here i think 
think it started to move back a little bit. There we go, I got it loose now. Come on, baby. It's moving. Trying not to mess up the line. All right, well, let me get this line off and we'll come back. All right, I finally got the fuel line pried off and I think I might have ripped it just a little tiny bit. We'll cut that off. So now with this end here, I can take and rotate this up to get the linkage off. And then it has the spring that you want to release here. And you don't want to let that spring go flying because it hooks back on this arm here. So you don't want to let it go front line you don't know where it goes to okay this gasket here is just a gasket between this and this metal plate so it's already a little messed up but it's okay we'll take that off here's the other gasket and the heat shield this gasket seems to be stuck there pretty good and the gaskets on the engine looks pretty good um so we're gonna get this stuff all cleaned off all these it almost looks like sawdust we'll get all the sawdust cleaned off and we'll start disassembling the carburetor all right so we got the carburetor off we're up here on the workbench we got two clean rags um this gasket is stuck pretty good so i'm not going to try to pull it off unless we have to soak it i don't think this carburetor is going to be that dirty that we're going to have to soak it looks pretty clean so we're going to go ahead and get the float bowl off it's another 10 millimeter. <clears throat> Let's take a look in here. So the boy kind of already did a mini clean on it, he said. But you can see that that's got a little bit of... See that build up in there? I think it's rust. It's got a little rust, bit of rust. Rust flakes in it yeah all right so there's the float bowl and the float bowl bolt we'll set that over here let's come over here so let's go ahead and we'll pull can we pull the pin out oh man i think it's really tight oh man look at that float i don't know if it, the camera's picking it up this float is got a lot of build up on it it's almost like powder so um let me get a pair of needle nose to get this pin out and we'll be back all right so take a pair of needle nose we're gonna grab this pin and see if it comes out oh it's moving there we go right. so there's the car float pin there's the float and the needle just fell there's a float and the needle we'll clean those up not much in here okay so when the float fills up with gas the gas flows through this hole here and there's a jet in here and we have several screwdrivers that we have to try to get in there i don't know let me show you it's got a slot it's got a screwdriver slot down in there well actually it's, it's picking it up yeah yeah and we're gonna have to get that out so you want the biggest screwdriver you can fit down there without screwing up the threads on the outside so we're gonna try this uh, screwdriver here now you know something it was loose <laughs> I didn't loosen this up unbelievable 
and I don't know, it's all the way. And there is definitely some buildup on on this. It should be all the way out, I would think. No, maybe not. Now I, I can feel that it's that it's all the way out. So now we just have to get it to come out. It it moved. I just pushed it back in. Oh, I can't get the jet to drop out. Come on, baby. Usually they just drop right out. And under the needle nose are just a little bit, the tips are just a little too big. They reach in there and grab it. It keeps pushing it in. Right there, at the, look, see, it's right there at the very end. I just can't get anything that'll grab it. It must be gummed up pretty bad. All right, well, I'm just wasting a uh, film here, so let me uh, get this out and we'll come back. All right, I finally got that jet out. What I had to do is I had to take a pick tool and go in through where the gas flows and push it down and keep working, and it finally came out. So let's see if I can get the emulsion tube out. So usually what you have to do, you have to take a screwdriver and go inside and push it down, which I already did. Yeah, it's already down inside there. And it looks like, oh, there you go. There's the emulsion tube. Yeah, it looks all gummed up. Yeah, it's got some gumminess to it. So we'll take our torch tip cleaner and we'll clean all those holes in it. And then we're going to blast this carburetor out. I think what we're going to do, I don't think we're going to disassemble any more. Um, because usually, as far as you get down to these things, yeah, usually they run. They do they run, run okay? They run okay. Well, do you think we should take that Phillips screw out and take a look at behind there? Uh, See, that would be an easy. It. Oh, it should be easy. All we have to do is we'll just count the screws on this end so we know exactly where this one belongs, and then we'll pop that one out too. Uh, I need a Phillips. You want to get me a? Oh, I can probably just use this one. So it's getting a little dark in here. I can't really see real well. Though. All right, so there's a half, there's one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. So it's four plus a little bit. So what we do is we'll, um, you screw it all the way in and you screw it out for just a little bit. So now we can take this screw all the way out. I'm gonna need a Phillips though to get this other one out. And now that comes out, we'll lay that with parts. I need a Phillips to get this. Uh, screwdrivers are over on the next side. No, bigger one, number two. Sorry. Number two Phillips. There we go. So number two Phillips, let's take this out. 
Oh, it came, it broke free really easily. All right, let's throw that screw in there also. Let's take a look. Yep, and see there's another jet in there that you can't get out. But we can definitely take and use our tip cleaner to clean that jet from here. So we'll do that. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take, get, take some gum cutter and our tip cleaner, and we'll go ahead and run the tip cleaner through here. I don't know if I have something that small. Where's that wire you just had? Put it back from a price tag. Yeah, we have this really skinny wire from a price tag that um, I have no idea where that came from. That will go ahead and we'll run through here and get this thing cleaned and we'll take some gum cutter and spray that off so there's that this is always fun the emulsion tube so let's start here it fits so there's one there's two and then we'll turn it to the side there's another one there and another one there. So let's flip it around. Now there is a really, really tiny hole there and two tiny holes there. Let me, this wire is actually too big to fit in those holes. Let me see if I have my torch tip cleaner. Do you remember where it is? Where is the torch? Tip? Probably gonna have to look for it. All right, well, I can't find my torch tip cleaner. Let's, uh, I'll find the torch tip cleaner and we'll come back. All right, so we've found some air inclate take cleaner. And as you see, when we spray the, the liquid in, liquid comes out of all the tiny little holes. See, so that's clean. And I just took and sprayed it down this jet here. These things have some very, very small holes. So that seems okay. And we'll go ahead and spray it down here. So this is kind of like an intermediate clean. You can see it spraying out. This is kind of a intermediate clean. I don't want to soak it because I don't think the carburetor is that dirty. And this is obviously some type of idle speed control screw that's been set at the factory. Idle mixture screw. And I don't really want to mess with that. What I'll do with that is I'll just spray oh, some. Yeah, definitely spray inside there. Yeah, I'm going to spray backwards there. So let's go ahead and uh, reassemble here. And see if we got it working. So you put the screw back in here. Tighten that up. Then you take... this screw and I'm going to screw this one in all the way until it stops okay that's all the way till it stops so that was that that was a little plus so we're going to start from here so there's a half one one and a half two two and a half three three and a half and four and that's exactly about where we were so that's all put back together we take the emulsion tube and the emulsion tube this end goes up that sticks through the carburetor so it goes in this way and then this jet goes in that we had the most difficult time to getting it out and let's see will that screwdriver work yeah that screwdriver seems I think it fits pretty good. Okay, get that tight. Okay, so we have not cleaned the nastinesses off this float. Probably shouldn't be using any type of cleaner on this one. I'm wipe it off. Really. You can see how it was yellow, and now it's turning clean. So oh, yeah, it's wipe... it looks better now. It looks much better. So we're going to clean that off. I don't like to spray toxic chemicals on these because sometimes it'll melt the float but we got to get some of it off of there and it's and you can shake it and there's nothing in it right yep nothing's in okay, it okay cool uh, that's yeah. a trick i learned on the internet yeah so now we need 
So this is the fun part. So you need to slide the needle on the float, then line everything up there, and then you need to put your pin back in. We're losing daylight here. Let's try pulling through this way. Let's try flipping the pin around. There we go. All right. And so there's that. So there's. So how bad does this look before? It looked about the same, except it had more jelly stuff at the bottom. Oh, so it did have jelly stuff in it? Yeah. Uh, so, I don't think any of that more... Yeah, see, I'm still getting it out. This thing needs to be soaked. We need to soak it. Do we have the, the, the carburetor cleaner here or not, or does it work? I think it's up at work. All right, well, we're going to have to soak this, and we're losing daylight. Because, because if I reach in here with my fingernail, I'm pulling out the powder. So we need to soak this to get this super clean. So we're going to stop the video here for the night. We'll soak this. We'll pick this up tomorrow. For you, it'll just be a scene cut. All right, actually, instead of going to work and putting this in the carburetor cleaner to soak it, uh, G Jr., has used a wire brush and some of the intake cleaner and got in there and got it sparkling clean and he did the same thing to the head of the bolt so now basically since he's done that we can go ahead and finish assembling the carburetor which is putting the float bolt on and putting the float bowl holding bolt back in 10 milliliter and tighten. So now we just got to put it back on the machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the linkage spring in and the linkage to the governor and then the linkage to this piece and the fuel and get this all bolted up. So we already showed you how to take it apart. We're not going to show you how to put this back together, but we'll put it back together and we'll come back with it on the ground and see if it runs okay all right we started bolting the carburetor back up and on this lawnmower here this is so stupid they're using these long bolts to hold the air cleaner housing on okay most lawnmowers have nuts and studs that come off of here so this is a very very difficult to put all together as an assembly because now this has got to go on here and you have got to make sure that none of the gaskets fall when you're putting it back together so very difficult to do so what we're going to i guess what we're going to try to do is i'm going to try to hold this from underneath while he takes the screws out and puts the cover back on but we're going to need like four hands so there's no sense in trying to show you how it's done it's very difficult all right it's dark so there's a flashlight all right go ahead and start it up let's see how it runs everybody that is how you clean the carburetor out on one of these um, HRX lawn mowers made by Honda the the jets in these are super small they have to be clean in order for these things to run better this thing is running much better than it was all right everybody thanks a lot for watching please subscribe you can always do it in that dark corner over there and please give me a thumbs up if you like my and more lawnmower repair videos